I use a mixture of shavings mixed with uh, small branches that go through a garden shredder, pine cones I put through a garden shredder. Gives a sort of coarse mix of smoker fuel. <clears throat> the shavings get it going, but the shavings on their own burn away too quick. So. Often have to do this twice before it goes properly. All these years, and I still struggle with lighting a smoker. But that is looking exceptionally good. <coughs> and then, because the fuel I used, I put a bit of roll up newspaper crease folded up newspaper creased up in the top like that that's a bit of a roach stop everything flying out you know what i think we're away first time oh god little winds little winds let's take them just gonna go and feed some bees i've just loaded up with some feeders the feeders are full of liquid feed um sugar water syrup mixed it about two pounds of sugar to a pint of water or the metric equivalent i'm not quite sure what it is anyway these feeders at the front uh haven't been used since last season and at the end of the year uh, once all the heather honey's done everything's done i will give them a wash out clean them up and store them away as clean as i can these at the back a different type of feeder and they were used in uh, middle of august for feeding stocks that never went to the heather um so these feeders with the gauze in are actually the better ones these at the back are just some buckets i bought cheap always cheap uh, and simply drill holes in the lids um they both work under the same principle there's a one that broke and fell over the other day so basically bucket with a gauze lid so i take the lid off there and the idea is you fill that with syrup and then tip it upside down some will run out and it then forms a vacuum uh, and that goes over the, the crown board on the hive the bees come up and, uh, and take it down and store it in the hive the same way as the wood honey I, uh, I don't like feeding bees unless I have to this is an insurance feed this one they all get a gallon there's about a gallon in each of them feeders they all get a gallon when they're off the heather and back on the wintering sites um, and then I'll go around and I'll lift them I'll heft them and any light ones may get a second or even possibly a third gallon. Well, some of them won't even take the first one. They're so full of heather honey. Um, but stock's been different and different behaviours, different genetics. Some will fill the, bro the brood chamber up with honey. Others uh, don't seem to put it all in my honey boxes. So this is really just a way of, of trying to ensure they've got enough food to get through the winter. Yeah, uh, another site. Um, this one is one of them that I didn't take to the mower and uh, they didn't do particularly well until so I took the silvers off and then oh, maybe a quarter of a mile that way I didn't know there was a uh, cover crop a lot of phacelia among it and they've rammed the brood chambers up so uh, I'm going to feed these last yeah, probably don't need to feed it all just odd ones do these front nine are some that were on the mower and I just brought them here for convenience just a good place to drop them they've all got a gallon of feed on I also found a dead hive over here and when I've come to lift the stand up, lo and behold, there's a bumblebee's nest. <laughs> so it was that way up like that. Uh, like that, actually. And that, this mass of grass and so forth, is actually a bumblebee's nest. The last few bumblebees are just, just coming out of it now. Not the best of uh, There. Most of them are there, they're very weak, they've about had it of things. I love bumblebees. It's the end of the season for them I'm afraid. But yeah there we are. If it had still been an active nest with a lot going on, put that bumblebee back. I would have uh, I would have left them but they have had it they're, they're done anyway. Well, Come to another site to put some feeders on. 
and uh, they're all quite quite strong here so as I'm taking the leads off and uh, the bees are clustering over the queen excluders these were left on to allow them to clean out any residue head of honey so now they're just dry wax when I take them off uh, some of them are quite strong oh I've just got stuck I'm wearing wellies today I must have got some bees down the inside of me well. I've just been stung on top of the foot and I've just been stung on the ankle. And if there's one thing really takes me out, it's to sting to the ankle. Oh, I can have it. <laughs> Bloody walk. Oh, yeah. Oh, no swearing. Anyway. Oh, there. Anyway. That's the other one I've just taken off. I'm strung there. For some reason, I don't see the like this one. It's a little bit small. Um, the idea is I'm taking them all, all the roofs off. And it's quite windy, breezy here today. So hopefully the cooler air will drive them back down into the box, the bottom box. So when I come to lift these queen excluders off, um, there isn't so many bees to bang off them. But uh, they're not moving very quickly. I've taken the queen excluders off these hives. Just a grid. The queen can't pass through that, so that goes over the bottom box which is what we have here all these bottom boxes and keeps the queen in that bottom box where she lays eggs produces larvae brood basically to grow the colony uh, i never take honey out of those bottom boxes that's purely their nest their nest alone so what i do now is some of these hives have an awful lot of wax over the crown board that's like their ceiling so i need to clean that up so the feeders will fit down flush Crown board, that one's fine, that doesn't need anything. Touch the scraping there, that one's fine. They're all okay. And then there is some of them. Well, I have to take the crown board off and scrape it off, saving the wax into a bucket. There. That actually I might be able to do because there's not a lot of bees mixing with it. One like that, I'll take the board off, bang the bees back in the hive, and then I can scrape without, without cutting bees, crushing the bees. There's a few bad ones, that's another very, very bad one. So right, that's my next job, and then get the feeders on them. Just at the back of my sheds here, then uh, I'll just use these, this place as a bit of a, a bit of a hospital yard really. It's these three hives here were all very light when I moved them off the mower, and they were suffering quite badly with uh, wasp predation. Um, so I bring them here, I reduce the entrances, and feed them and uh, two out of the three are good two out of three ain't bad I suppose but anyway that one if you watch them you see they're bringing quite a bit of pollen in bees coming in with pollen on the back legs that's a sign they're good and healthy and queen right there look at that a load of pollen going in so they're probably good this middle one quite a few bees flying but no, no signs of any pollen whatsoever. And they wouldn't take feed, I took their feeder off them. So the fact they won't take feed, the fact there's no pollen going in, and there's a wasp there trying to get in, I think they're uh, queens. And if they have a queen, she's a drone layer. So I'm afraid they won't make it. And then the third one, reduce this entrance. And I have seen bees here going in with pollen. There's one there just going in there, that's it. So they should be okay. Little telltale signs. Three of the hives on this site needed a second feed. And uh, I've come back and taken them off now. Um, they're okay, but there's one here, number 13. That was one that I took the feeder off, and there's a few wasps hanging about. There's one there just landing on the entrance. They're actually hanging around my phone, these wasps, hanging around me. Uh, I mean, it's what, 15th, 16th of October? I should soon be done, these wasps. There are a few. Just trying to get into there. And it isn't the strongest of colonies. 
and by the look of that they're all over this part of the hive this side looks to be as though it isn't occupied by them so i'm just going to show a little bit of newspaper in and reduce that entrance down the wasps will soon twig to go in this empty side and get in and steal the honey as i say wasps problems are about done but not quite so i'm doing this without upsetting the bees <sighs> One, back in. One. Find it helps. Whistling them in. One. Be careful. They're in wasps. There's not masses of them, but they're, they're just trying to, to get in there. There's one landing on the entrance there. Anyway. If that paper's there a day or two, it'll do the job. I think there's colder weather coming, wetter weather coming, and hopefully that'll once and for all be the end of the wasps. So, the wonders of newspaper. The trouble with the feeders I use, the friction feeders, is that sometimes, as the temperature changes during the day, the, uh, the air in the top of the feeder can expand with the heat and force syrup out, a bit of a leak. Strong colonies of bees will cope with that and, uh, and gather the syrup up as fast as it comes out. But this one obviously isn't strong enough. And this, this dampness here is where, where syrup's been leaking and the wasps are just all over it. Whether they're getting into the hive or not, I don't know. I mean, I've given it a head and it's, it's reasonably heavy. If that wasp predation continues, there's a good chance they'll rob all the honey out from the, the bees won't survive. So all I can do in this situation, there is colder weather coming and hopefully that'll be an end to the wasps. I'm just gonna have to reduce that entrance as much as I can. And the only thing I've got that I have them on me is newspaper. So just simply force that in like that. Come on. Bloody wasps. What we do is we reduce the entrance down so and get it to a single bee space. And these wasps are bloody nuisance. Get out of here. Go on. I don't want you to get stung here. I can react badly to wasps in this lot. There. The bees have got a far better chance of defending that one little bit of entrance than they have the full width. Uh, I've hefted them, yeah, they're heavy enough. Hopefully they'll be okay. I'll leave that brick on there as a marker at the front. That often means, uh, that usually means I'm requiring some sort of attention. I'd want to watch anyway. Yeah. We've had a frosty night or two, but it doesn't, it doesn't finish the wasps off. And they're just desperate, desperate for food they can get from anywhere now. Hmm. Jury's out on whether that one will survive or not. But there's nothing else I can do, I don't think, at the moment. Nothing. Feeders on. Some of them are empty. Some of them have a bit in from uh, this site. It was the last one to be fed because they were very heavy anyway. There was a cover crop not far away. I didn't know it was there. Contained a lot of phacelia and other flowering plants. And, and uh, they romped a, quite a bit of honey in it late August. Consequently, they haven't needed a lot of feed. Some of them have taken a full gallon. Some haven't hardly touched it, they're that full. Um, but anyway, I just feel happy. It's a form of insurance, really. And now all the bricks are on. So they'll be all right for a while. The wasp was trying to get me there. Uh, yeah, next job is to come back and put uh, mouse excluders on those that need it. But that'll be another Perhaps another fortnight. Uh, the other thing is this grass. I'm going to have to get trimmed. I've just never known grass grow on any site like it does here. Grass and docks and nettles. Must be good land. Really good land. Yeah. Right, well away. Feeds are all off the hives now. I'm back in my shed awaiting washing. Uh, that's a job to look forward to. 
you enjoyed that please click like and subscribe and uh, for further notifications ring that bell it won't cost you anything thanks again bye